graduates of 2014. Applause. Please remain standing around for the next line from the United States. My name is Dr. Jack Rosenzweig, and I welcome you to Atlantic International University's graduation. I want to share a few thoughts with you and welcome you, but I'm not going to talk a lot. It's all about you today. The finish line to that journey that you started when you enrolled at AIU is today. But does that mean it's the end? No. Because you're going to start a new journey after you receive your degrees. A lot of you are going to go back to your countries and you're going to help your countries advance. A lot of you are going to maybe get a promotion and going to help you and your family and your friends. But before we continue with this ceremony, I want to thank all the parents, grandparents, children, family members, friends that were there in your journey. Please give applause to these people. As we know, globalization is a key word. The, the boundaries, the frontiers are coming down. And this graduation shows that we are a United Nations of people. There are more than 30 countries here represented today. This shows the diversity of AIU, the diversity of yourselves. I want you to look around and talk to your colleagues after the graduation. These are the people that might help you later. Might, you might go back and study. You might do a lot of things, but these are your colleagues. These are the people that finish that. Through sacrifice, through sweat, through not going out, coming from work and sitting in front of a computer, working, reading the advisor's emails, doing the projects. All that work is a culmination today. Albert Einstein once said, Learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop questioning. You didn't stop questioning. You continue. In this system that AIU has that is so flexible, you were able to get your degrees and get the knowledge that you need. I've been speaking to a lot of brands today, and I hear a lot of stories of promotions in your jobs. Um, better livelihood, things like that. And that's one of the things that makes this event special. Not just the culmination, but the beginning of your new journey. Um, like I said, I was gonna be short and sweet. Before we continue, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna tell you who our guest of honor from Atlantic International University. Um, we have Ricardo Gonzalez, Vice President of Operations, Dr. Dr. Ricardo Gonzalez, Provost. <laughs> Dr. Miriam Garibaldi, Faculty and Academic Council Member. Dr. Jose Mercado, Chairman of the Board. 
Dr. Franklin Grassley, Anna McBean, the president, and Dr. Scott Wilson, faculty and academic counselor. Now it is a pleasure for me to introduce our first speaker. Dr. Franklin Balsing is the President and Dean. He received a Doctor of Education in Instructional Technology and Distance Learning. Dr. Balsing has more than 32 years of teaching experience and has pioneered the concepts of self-learning, curriculum design, and andragogy, which are the foundations of AU's learning models. He was, has developed and taught a wide array of educational courses and programs for Florida International University, St. Thomas University, Florida Memorial College, and Miami Dade College, and I could go on and on. There's many more. Honored as the Director of Educational Opportunity Center of Miami Dade College, as the Best Support Program in Higher Learning in February 2004, has published numerous books and articles in English and French. Most recently, he published a new book, Curriculum and Course Design. Please welcome Dr. Balsi. students, 
lovely parents, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope, I repeat, that you that are to watch this event take off in flying colors, and most importantly, we do hope our students will have the opportunity to get acquainted with the people who must be the most important in their lives. Yes, dear great lady students. This is the job I'm going to try my very best to perform is that the, I'm going to introduce to you a few people who you never knew were so capable, so skilled, so able to be inspired. Those people who have the entire world. This is the discovery of the long head you make this afternoon without making a special speech. But before we get there, there is a little anecdote that I would like to give you about my personal life. If my recollection is clear, I must be about 23 years old when one day, out of nowhere, I just decided I want to get some adventure. I want to be inside. I wanted to be thrilled. And I built a very beautiful and powerful cat. Can you imagine? I'm 23 years old, and all I found to be interesting was to build a kite. So there I was with my kite, and quickly the kite was up in the air, and I enjoyed parading everything, and some of the people who knew what were watching what was going on. And all of a sudden, the kite fell, and was caught in the branches of a tree. I tried my very best at that time to get the kite back. We're talking about uh, 30 feet high on the tree. So I kept trying. In one of those attempts, I fell flat on my back. And people who were watching this started laughing. And in one instant also, as I was getting all the way up on the upper portion of the trunk of the tree, as I was trying to get the first bunch of there to keep moving and get the kite back, my pants were cut in one of the branches of the tree, and I slipped back down all the way to the barrel, leaving my pants up there. Can you imagine? I was in underwear at that moment, and everybody was, you know, looking and laughing like crazy. So I felt miserable. At that time, there was a little boy, about 10 years old. He came to my rescue. In about 10, 15 seconds, he was at the top of the tree. He got my kite back, and he brought it back. I felt ashamed. But the very next day, you know what I did? I went back to that area where the tree was. And I went there with this idea in my mind, with that force driving me, that confidence telling me, I'm not going to take this. If someone has done something, I must be able to do it as well. And I will do it. So I decided I must find a way to get on the top of the tree myself as well. Guess what? I did it. On my first new attempts, I collapsed about five times. But I kept trying very, very hard until, as I said, ultimately, I got it. I got it, ladies and gentlemen, because I had this faith in me, my mind, that I was not less human than that boy or anybody else. If someone has done something, I must be able to do it as well. Ladies and gentlemen, it is this idea that I want you to leave. 
this setting with tonight. I want you to understand that in life, you must take risks. You must make moves. We're talking about bold moves. In my case, I had to take risks. This is the only reason, the only way people can succeed. You must, again, take risks. Check this out if you want any time with those people whom we know to be powerful or successful or any way you want to describe them. Those who succeed, they get well there at the very top because they believe that they have the power, the skills and everything else that is needed to get to the top. If you never fully understand and try to this is it, ladies and gentlemen. And you are to kind of be eager to be introduced to those new powerful folks, those special individuals whom I announced earlier. And guess what? How many of you are ready to be introduced to these people that I announced? Do you want to see them? Do you want to meet them? Do you? Yes. Very good. But guess what? Dear graduating students of the class of 2014 of Atlantic International University, you, you are those competent, capable, very skilled people whom you have never understood. They're the ones that are doing things. They're the ones who have the capacity. They're the ones who push you, not necessarily at the International University, not the faculty, not the board of trustees, not anybody at AIU. In a national, I mean, in a traditional school, for example, let's think about it, teachers and professors tell you what and when to learn, from whom, why, and how. And in this manner, I'm telling you, dear graduating students, you simply learn from other people what they have done, the way that they have done things. And you get into a business of imitating those people. You are not learning. If you do exactly what people tell you to do, you copy their ideas, you copy their systems. You are not learning. There is no educational process really taking off in you. You are not learning. And this is it. Because when you proceed this way, like the whole world has been doing it for years, all that is happening is you are copying people. There is no mechanism that is triggered inside you to get you to really learn or master. If you don't understand very well what I'm trying to convey right now, I would like you to do the experience yourselves and try to find somebody who has learned that traditional way and ask them what they have truly mastered. You will find nothing. They will find absolutely nothing, regardless of whether those students are from Yale, from Harvard, from Princeton, from Oxford, from La Sorbonne, anywhere in the world. You will find nothing if all they do is copy from books. Copy from students, copy from the so-called experts. If they've never created something on their own, from their own skills, they have learned absolutely nothing. And again, I'm telling you, you can go anywhere in the whole wide world, you're going to find no single example. And this is why learning, listen to this truth, ladies and gentlemen, learning is a personal activity. You cannot learn from other people. Of course, you're going to take me as a way it's been for centuries. Of course, the people have been doing it for years, but it never works. I'll challenge anybody to find in any school, any university, any educational center and find, let's say, more than 20 or 30 percent of the student body who are doing extremely well. Again, I'm presenting you with this challenge this evening. 
you're not going to find any school where everybody is really doing extremely well. It's only those who get themselves truly involved in what they're doing. They're the ones who master school. Let's never forget this in your whole life. The best news, the best thing you can get from the business of education, the world of education, the best news I'm repeating, never comes from a school. The best you can get about education never comes from an institution. Don't try to find anywhere. Don't do any school. Those so-called prestigious or well-known schools. The best thing in the world of education does not come from a school. It comes from people. And I can give you an example right now. Just about two weeks ago, this month of June 2014, the very best example we had here in the United States was from a boy named Tanish Abraham who graduated from Sacramento in California, graduating high school at the age of 10. Two weeks ago, I repeat the name, Tanish Abraham, graduating high school at the age of 10 and with a GPA of 4.0, the very best in his school. Two weeks ago, in Sacramento, Sacramento, sorry, California. This is not from a school, ladies and gentlemen. It is from one person. And believe it or not, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, dear graduate students, there is nothing special in Tarnish Abraham. That 10 year old boy who graduated high school at the age of 10, nothing special in him that is not in you at this time. Exactly where every one of you is sitting at this time. The only difference is you will maybe spend your whole life and never be able to find that special person if all you do in your lives is copying from other people. Getting things from other people, uh, getting ideas only from books. Never try to create on your own at 100%. I'm not saying at 20, at 60, at 75, at 100%. Creating things from scratch on your own. This is Atlantic International University. Yes, the other way making students. One AIU has provided you with all the guidance that you could have needed. We don't know up to this point right now, this Thursday, whether you have really mastered what you believe you have learned. We don't know. It is so because what you achieved was your decision, your personal achievement, your craft, your work. Of course, AI you convinced you that everything you needed to be successful was inside you. But you, the graduating class of 2014, you did it. I'm glad you did it. But I'm not taking credits for any of those examples of achievements. Nor is anybody from AIU. And that's why, at this moment, I would like to say welcome. Welcome to the new you, ladies and gentlemen. And good luck with whatever you will do with your newly discovered skills and capacity. Like they say, for example, in Spanish, that's a very nice thing that I love to repeat. In Espanol, lo dicen así. Enseñar, enseñar. O aprender no puede parecerse a nada más que llenar una botella de agua, sino ayudar a crecer una flor en su manera. Esta idea es de un maestro que se llama Noah Chomsky, 
Y lo que quiso explicar o recordarnos es que la educación no es solamente algo grande en la vida en general, sino que es la vida, es parte de la vida, no es nada más una, algo que es importante, que es la vida. La educación de esta manera se adiestra. Estoy hablando de adentramiento, un término que utilizan en la antropología educativa, es que alguien que llega a educarse de esta forma como yo le estoy explicando, es alguien que logra actuar como Dios de verdad, porque con la educación que se adquiere de esta forma, uno logra crear y actuar de una forma que ayude a obtener, a fabricar lo mejor que pueda existir de la vida. Ojalá que sea así para cada uno de ustedes, queridos graduando de este año. Dear friends, yes, you will face more obstacles, more challenges, more adversities, more hardships in your entire professional or academic life. But this is my last word to you. Don't feel anything. Be fearless. Don't be afraid because it is in you. What you need to be successful is inside you. And you're going to obtain it if you try to take those things without going anywhere. That's because it is in you. You're going to be able to find it here today, tomorrow, and every time you try, you're going to be successful because, again, it is in you. And yes, you will get it time and again every stage and point of your entire existence on this earth. It's a song of you. Thumbs up. Congratulations. And may the almighty architect of the universe bless you all very abundantly. Thank you. Very good speech, right? Guys excited? Yeah? Yeah? There we go. Our next speaker is Dr. Scott Alexander Ockburn. Dr. Ockburn is an adjunct professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Temple University. Dr. Ockburn has had his own architectural design firm doing residential architecture and sacred architecture landscape design, and outdoor sculpture. In January of 2009, he took a trip to Yucatan, Mexico to visit and research the Mayan temples at Chichen Itza, Tulum, and Cobo. Sorry if I mispronounced that. He also presented a lecture on Mayan mythology, symbology, and astronomy in fall of 2009. He's done different presentations on a yearly basis on sacred architecture. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Ockward.
basically I have a presentation of my uh, PhD dissertation a process of my particular dissertation. And again, it's really many thanks to Dr. Mercado because he was an incredible advisor. And hopefully you found that most of the uh, faculty, or all of the faculty, were great people and great advisors and great human beings to help us all in this journey. And I want to congratulate all of you for the end of one journey, but the beginning of another. So I want to congratulate all of you uh, in completing your degrees and moving forward. And this is a lot of exciting things, as Dr. Thompson mentioned, that we can participate in the world. And uh, I'll introduce, I have one beginning quote and one ending quote. I think I have seven minutes. <laughs> I may go slightly over to seven minutes. I get fired, I get pumped, I get excited too. Okay, so my first quote is from Einstein. If I notice Dr. Albert Einstein, there's some quotes here. He's an amazing individual. Believe it or not, my father got his PhD actually studying under Albert Einstein at Princeton in the late 1940s. And my father's passed away, but he knew I started this degree, and he would be very happy uh, that I finished it. My father would be too. Um, but the quote I remember that's one of my favorites from Dr. Einstein is, imagination is more important than knowledge. But he also added that you needed to, once you imagine what you need to do, you needed to increase your knowledge base so your imagination became the new knowledge. And so that's how he actually developed E equals MC squared, that he transformed physics in the early 1900s. He was just a patent clerk. And he got the whole relativity theory right in the bus going back and forth to the patent clerk office. Uh, you know that moment of buses going back and forth? It was kind of weird. Remember that moment? That was his moment of, uh, well, light travel E equals MC squared. Anyway. That's my first quote from Einstein. I'll finish with another quote. Uh, but let me begin here. Um, basically, my PhD dissertation is on sacred architecture. And if I can read it right here. The uh, title of my dissertation is An Inquiry into the Fusion of Principles of Astronomical Act. An Inquiry into the Fusion of Principles of Astronomical Alignments and principles of sacred geometry in the design process of sacred architecture. And for people that have done uh, dissertations, PhDs, uh, obviously it's based on the idea of doing original research that hasn't been done before. And so I felt that my combination of analyzing astronomical alignments in sacred architecture and principles of sacred geometry in sacred architecture uh, I also teach foundation studios, so I teach architecture students and civil and mechanical engineers how to make things. And so I combined, uh, this PhD was actually, became a data collection of student work, uh, creating sacred places, uh, art based on student work from architecture students, uh, creating sacred spaces, uh, using both astronomical alignments and sacred geometry. So real briefly here, that's I'll try to rush through this. Uh, there. Uh, well, this is just my business card, and it uses uh, sacred geometry. The symbol on the left, real briefly, it's a secret symbol from the masons of the 12th century, 13th century, who designed Gothic cathedrals. And it's a way to create, as you can see, there's a Gothic arch. Uh, that's known because it's a pointed arch. It's a Gothic arch versus a rounded arch. It's a Romanesque arch. So that's a symbol the masons, master masons used in creating some, the arches, the portions of the Gothic arch in the Gothic cathedrals in the 1200s. Uh, real briefly, uh, I've got a lot of text here, but the dissertation was made up of 10 chapters. And I think the important thing with any PhD dissertation is uh, obviously there's historical research for a component of serious research, and then a data collection, and then conclusions and an analysis. So there is a process we can do this. Um, so I had three chapters on analyzing um, examples of astronomical alignments in sacred architecture, and then I had another chapter, uh, examples of 
uh, sacred geometry principles used in say, ancient sacred architecture, and then I had another chapter on defining astronomical principles, and then I went into the data collection. So I'm going to kind of sit through. These are uh, Uh, these are just text. Uh, one minute. Oh, there. Okay, so I'm just going through because this is rather, I want to get to the images because if people know you learn a lot from images, it's actually been fascinating. It's a whole other topic, but you learn a lot from images almost more than uh, memorizing figures and facts. Okay, so basically, uh, for my dissertation, this is a copyrighted diagram I created. It's a bit complicated, but basically, it's based on the latitude of 40 degree north. I use this in some of the sacred architecture I build. And the center lines represent the sunrise on the equinox and the sunset on the equinox. And the lines up and above, above and below the center lines represent the uh, solstice, the summer solstice sunrise, winter solstice sunrise, uh, winter solstice sunset, summer solstice sunset, and also the movement of the moon, which is almost too complicated to explain in this brief seven minute lecture, which is a 18.6 cycle uh, versus the solar cycle, uh, which is different. So this diagram, my students had to use this to calculate where the sun would appear on the horizon for their projects, which are coming up. Come on. Okay. It's almost there. There. Um, so this is Stonehenge. I actually visited Stonehenge in person, uh, 1988. This is summer solstice, but you can see the sun setting between two uh, vertical columns, uh, and then there's a lintel stone. But Stonehenge was designed as a, both an astronomical observatory, a healing center, a ceremonial center. Uh, it had a number of purposes, and it actually was started in 3000 BC and completed in 2000 BC. But it's in the center of the circle looking out on different times of the year, especially the solstice sunrise and sunsets, the equinox sunrise and sunsets, the sun will appear between the pairs of stones. It's very precise. And in the back one slide. Uh, uh, basically, there's a top right to lower left. There's an alignment that's famous for the summer solstice sunrise. But again, Stonehenge works if you stand in the center of the circle looking out to observe these astronomical events. So I would give lectures to my students on astronomy and sacred geometry before they began the projects. And so the next image. Uh, the next image is of the Great Pyramid in Egypt I've also been to. And that has astronomical alignments as well. Uh, it's the only pyramid in Egypt that has the chambers above ground. All the other pyramids in Egypt have uh, the chambers below ground. That's a whole other story. Uh, I did a whole lecture on ancient Atlantis, that the Great Pyramid was from ancient Atlantis 10,000 years ago. A whole other lecture. Uh, but basically, the astro I'm just giving a few examples real briefly. There's some astronomical alignments of the air shafts from the King's Chamber and the Queen's Chamber. There are these. Uh, maybe 12 inch by 12 inch cuts that go diagonally through the entire structure, which if you're an architect or an engineer is completely amazing. And also to build chambers above ground is also completely amazing. And they're angled walkways, and anyway, the air shafts from the king's chamber line up to Osiris, uh, the constellation, and the other from the Queen's Chamber lines up to uh, a female constellation that is involved with Sirius. So there's a masculine and feminine aspect to the astronomical alignments at the uh, Great Pyramid. Mm -hmm. there. Uh, so another example of the uh, alignments 
And supposedly, uh, well, there's a theory that the pharaoh, when he left his body, would go through the air shafts and go to the stars at these constellations. The other theory is that the pyramid was a temple of initiation from ancient Atlantis. Because actually, the alignments, what's interesting is it only happens every 10,000 years. Like on the summer solstice, June 21st, 10,000 years ago, at midnight, Orion would be up in the sky. And that would be the time, if you could see through the air shaft, and you could see uh, from the King's Chamber the uh, alignment to the star uh, in Orion's belt in Taka. Uh, so this actually, this event only happens every 10,000 years, these alignments, which is uh, a whole mystery, another lecture. Uh, these are examples of the Temple of Karnak. Uh, basically, the other slide just had some, uh, there's some angles uh, to the summer solstice uh, sunset that go crosswise through the temple. But what's really interesting at Karnak is the temple was started around 1800 BC, ended around 1200 BC, but you can see the, uh, the bottom temple is tilted. And that's because they wanted to keep the alignment to the star Sirius, which represents Isis, the female deity uh, of Egypt. And they wanted, on the equinox, March 21st sunrise, they wanted the people to be able to look through the columns. If you were in the center of the temple at the top, you wanted to look through the columns and on the March 21st sunset, see the star Sirius rise right after the sunset. But because of the nature of the way it's called precession of the equinox, the Earth actually 26,000 years, it's called the precession of the equinox, only a bunch of But basically, it involves, uh, for example, the North Star is Polaris. It's only going to be the North Star for about another thousand years. And then there's going to be a different North Star. And in 26,000 years from now, Polaris will be the North Star again for 2,500 years. Okay, so let me get to some examples of sacred geometry and then my student work. Uh, actually, this is my own work. We're getting to examples of sacred geometry. This is uh, a garden I designed uh, at a yoga center in Pennsylvania. Uh, but it's got a golden spiral. It's called the golden spiral to a central, central circle. Uh, it's called the Peace Garden but it's using a logarithmic spiral based on the Fibonacci series. And the garden of real life, there, uh, this is the garden built in real life. And these are just examples of overlaying sacred geometry. There's a whole other lecture about what is sacred geometry. I recommend you just Google it. <laughs> go to different sites if you really want to learn about it, because I think I'm limited on, limited on time here, and I want to get to the student examples. So Bruce Walls has an excellent site on sacred geometry, but basically the Great Pyramid uh, forms what's known as the best of Pisces. Uh, in this symbol, that's a feminine symbol, the best of Pisces. Uh, it's actually two circles overlapping at the radii, and you get the interior crescent, and in Chartres Cathedral, the Vesica Pisces, there's a stained glass window with Mary Magdalene, uh, no, excuse me, Mary, uh, <laughs> the wife of Joseph, holding the Christ child in a stained glass window. She's inside that uh, Vesica Pisces inner crescent, which is a feminine principle. So there's masculine and feminine principles of sacred John. So let me get to the, the student work here. Uh, this is a famous golden rectangle. The Fibonacci series, uh, it was reinvented from ancient Egypt. And you have to understand, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle all spent time in ancient Egypt. Uh, Pythagoras got his Pythagorean theorem from uh, the priests of ancient Egypt. Uh, so this is actually from ancient Egypt. But Fibonacci, that fellow, Italian mathematician in the 1300s, uh, we kind of reinvented it, but it's based on, uh, you start with number one, at one to one you get two, two to one, three, uh, two to three, five, five to three, eight, eight to five, thirteen, eight to thirteen, twenty-one. My point is, if you take the numbers in sequence, say you divide twenty-one by thirteen, you get the proportion 1.618, which is five, which appears in sunflower seed pods, 
It appears in the ratio of leaves to trees, etc. So the gold, it's called the golden ratio, and it appears in nature, but it also appears in good sacred architecture. So I also taught my students about some of these principles integrated here. Uh, this is the flower of life. It's also integrated with the Jewish uh, Kabbalah symbol. That's another lecture. Uh, these are examples cross culturally, uh, cult cross culturally Incan. Uh, it's the Incan cross. I'll get through that. Okay, we're finally getting to some of the student work here. Basically, I had two assignments, two different design projects for the students. And in this kind of dissertation, I had to do a lot of research, particularly people like Sean McNiff. Uh, his book is called Art Based Research. And you can do dissertations on student artwork, whether it's painting, sculpture, computer. These are computer drawings. Uh, these are done with AutoCAD and then rendering software, AccuRender, and 3D Studio Max. So first I had to make sure that you could do a dissertation using student artwork as data collection, but you have to assign something important to it, like symbology or something that's different than just painting. So you have to make the students incorporate something significant. And so this is a project, the first project that had to redesign Stonehenge. So these are students that looked at Stonehenge and then they did their own variations of Stonehenge and they all have different astronomical alignments and sacred geometry. I just like to wrap up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in fact, in, uh, if you guys don't mind, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an entertainer. I, I can go for two hours, but I'll have two more minutes. Two more minutes, Jack? Uh, two, two. Okay. Uh, if the clicker works. These are just examples of different student work. So it's my data collection for the dissertation, and these are different students uh, using the computer to create their ideas for redesigning Stonehenge. Okay, and there's shadow casting, there's rays of light, there's tunnels of light. You can see equinox and solstice alignments. Uh, these are these are quite amazing. These take the students days and days to produce. So that this is not something you can create in five minutes. This work by, uh, these are college architecture students, second year, and they, they, each image takes two or three days to create. Okay, so the second project, I'm getting close to the end here. The second project was the students had to create something based on the platonic solids. Okay, these were different assignments uh, using different principles. A platonic solid is it, a square. It has to have four sides or an octagon, uh, which is an eight-sided pyramid. So these, this is a uh, uh, based on a platonic solid. So this is a different data collection based on sacred geometry. This is a pyramid, but the student also had an octagon uh, Octahedron, it's called an octahedron below this. But these, these are quite beautiful, uh, high resolution images. This hidden egg is a meditation chamber inside the pyramid, which I thought was really cool. Thank you.
you guys. I know we're coming. I'm 
Amén. Every group will have a speech of one group leader. You Thank you very much, management of AIU, fellow graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. On behalf of Group 1, I'm Amal Namakula, the team leader. We're sharing our experience with AIU. One, We've learned discipline, self-discipline, self-motivation to learn on your own, very convenient. It has taken into consideration the past achievements from the past, from the bachelor's degree, master's degree, now the doctorate or the bachelor's, now the master's. The experience of designing your own curriculum is self-motivating. Dr. Franklin talked about that. It's quite an experience, it's quite a challenge all over the world. It's non-traditional. Everyone is fighting against it, but I think so many people are coming on board. The tiny team is an experience, it's a awesome where you have to get the originality from the authors. It's quite an experience and a learning experience of AIU. We thank you so much. It allows us to reach one's own potential by being original, by getting out the originality from the inner person you are. It deepens the understanding of one's curricula, wherever course you're doing. Age is no limit. At whatever age, you can still graduate, either with a bachelor's, a master's, a doctorate, you can always achieve your dream. It teaches you how to be open-minded. by developing your own curriculum. Tactical knowledge, thinking out of the box, you become an independent thinker, a critical thinker. You always have a plan B, a plan C, if A comes to work. Above all, communication skills as a discipline. AIU, you're great. You communicate with your advisor, your tutor, in minutes or seconds, you get a response. We applaud you for that. We, you mark our assignments in 24 to 48 hours, and you never miss it. We applaud you for that. And when you do, we complain, definitely in the next one, two hours, you'll get a response. You've taught us how to communicate effectively. A number of us here, we shall agree, how you are sent emails and some of you never respond to whether you have received it or not. You just keep quiet. With AIU, I think we've all learned how to communicate 
just a thank you and really soon. Thank you so much. My name is Dr. John O.K.K. Kasawa from the United States University of Science and Technology and in Nigeria. Standing on existing protocol and uh, where the last speaker stopped, I must thank my curator and the management of AIU for what I saw and what I did to get to the level I am. Those of us who are teaching in universities, we have been now made to know that age is no barrier to academic progress. Looking at the caliber and the ages of our graduating students today, majority are in the ages of 50 and above. And the existence of AIU has made us to learn that we should save money for our academic upliftment. We did that, and today, many of us are doctors. Instead of saving for our families, friends, well-wishers, taking our money to take chief classic titles, today we are happy that AIU has come to stay. On the second note, many tested other universities before coming to AIU. And I thank God and I praise you for that. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Juan Pablo. What you saw early was no mistake is that we are so proud that we can be walking around all day long, okay? Let me share you my experience, our experience. Um, the only thing I want to do is thanks Atlanta International University for the opportunity that it's giving us. My experience at Atlanta AIU opened my eyes to something that I forgot through the Dragon theory years ago since I was a kid. I'm the one who wants to learn. I'm the one who wants to make questions. Now I'm applying that, not for my master, but in my family, a job. As they say, we start a journey. We start improving our farms, our communities, our country, our world. But what about the universe? And they say there, the common attention, life, learn, and share. Keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Our next group, Henry Lungo. Zambia, Doctor of Philosophy, Public Health. <laughs> Lorna Patricia Thompson, Jamaica, Doctor of Philosophy, Curriculum Development. <laughs> Maxwell David Komi Akawa, Ghana, Doctor of Philosophy, Marketing. <laughs> Maxwell David Komi Akawa, Ghana, Doctor of Philosophy, Marketing. Again, Emika Charles, Nigeria, Doctor of Religious Studies, Church History. <laughs> Josephine Dada Pinda Tenpe, Liberia, Master of Science, Social Work and Human Development. <laughs> Teresa Xiska Magrida, Malawi, Bachelor of Business Administration, Finance. <laughs> Bernard Shanova, Canada. Bachelor of Science, Civil Engineering. George Okok Onyango, Kenya, Bachelor of Science, Electrical Engineering. Brenda Bawali, Zambia, Bachelor of Science, Computer Engineering.
faculty and fellow graduates. I speak for group two. We shall be very brief because we are business people. So we shall be very brief. Group two has a very diverse background and uh, uh, nationality. Some are from Zambia, Kenya, Canada, Malawi, Ghana, Liberia, and others. We are also from very diverse, uh, diverse backgrounds, ranging from engineering, education, social work, religions, and business. This group chose to do PhDs in AIU for the following reasons. One, cost. The person who is currently doing another PhD, it cost him $48,000. But for, for AIU, it is relatively cheap, but not cheap in context. We are very proud of AIU. Then the payment terms are also flexible. Like other traditional universities, that you make a lump sum payment. Two, we chose there because of this flexibility. I mean flexibility in the sense that you are able to design your own curriculum depending on your specific needs. Traditional universities, like all the University in Harvard and other ones, give you a structured and rigid format, whether you like it or not. That does not give the best, bring out the best of the, the students. And at AI, you design your own curriculum. Number three, the costing that we do at AI University because of the choice to choose, uh, the freedom to choose what you want, the courses become more relevant. What about with stability, immediate life of stability? Then we also enjoy an exceptional relationship the faculty, we see them as mentors and not as lecturers. That also determines the way we have feedback from them, and the way we can always ask questions and have very easy access. We are also proud of AIU for all this, and there is one thing that we want to present to AIU to think about, it is that with accreditation. Some who are in government employment or in the educational sector will wish that they are in school that they so that they don't have issues with promotions and whatnot. Those in private employment, of course, we don't need anybody's accreditation. We have seen higher promotions. We have now been able to appreciate what we used to do before, but we still need some subjects that are relevant to us. And also, it is good to call the doctor. So we are very proud of that. We want to thank you for the opportunity to bring us to Jalika Devin Wellings Sin Fukui, Zimbabwe, Doctor of Business Administration, Human Resource Manager. Mantani York, Senegal, Doctor of Philosophy Project Manager. Eshetu Bekil Yemenu, Ethiopia, Doctor of Philosophy Development and Sociology, Kulawe. Scott Alexander Ockberg, United States, Doctor of Philosophy, Sacred Architecture, Kung Lao. <laughs> Joseph Ndengu Malawi, Doctor of Philosophy, Strategic Management and Planning. <laughs> Joseph Shimels Chiru, Ethiopia, Masters of Science, Information Technology.
Clemens James Capamola, Brazil, Bachelor of Arts, Humanities. S.U. Catenu Camilo, Angola, Bachelor of Business Administration, Banking and Finance. Abdul Raouf Jaffer, Meritus, Chap Bachelor of Science, Legal Study. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joseph Tengu, as you already, already heard, and I come from Malawi. I'm graduating in a uh, uh, PhD in the Strategic Management at the Army. I am making a presentation on the act of Group 3, where mainly what we are looking at were experiences with our experiences with AI. The first one we came up with, you know, we noted or observed, was the issue of the university's flexibility. The issue of flexibility came to two parts. The first part of flexibility for students to map their own testament, to be developing their own curriculum, by uh, allowing them to select what subjects they want, which be useful in designing their testament professionally and personally. Instead of the university selecting for you what to do, and then you are left with the choice of what so much do I do with this. And the university tells you, design what you want, and immediately you finish your final We thought we should take it on to that. The second flexibility was on the issue of fees. We feel that uh, the total amount as well as the instrument regime uh, really, you know, reaches out to the broad spectrum of people in terms of financial capabilities. I would like to acknowledge that. And with which staff of AIU discharge their duties, we noted that it was not just a commitment to their way that they did what we saw, but we noted that there was a personal touch to their way, a personal commitment. People were able to go an extra mile to make sure that things are done, and we are grateful for that. Uh, lastly, we, we had you know, a number of observations about experiences, exciting experiences. For instance, with online learning, you go into the student section, you go in the online library, and you know, thousands of kilometers away, you have a library with a book in front of you. We thought those were among uh, exciting experiences. The last bit that we touched upon, I think, was already mentioned by another group, was the issue of accreditation. So, I think somebody already talked about it and would have appreciate it. it would be accredited. Thank you. Cleopatra Shingrari Matanhoi, Doctor of Tax Policy and Taxation. Antonio da Silva Angola, Doctor of Philosophy, Business Administration. Regina Musamai Malambo, Ethiopia, Doctor of Project Management, Project Management. Amos Maru, Zimbabwe, Doctor of Science, Public Health. Alendo Bengui Andre, Norway, Doctor of Science, Telecommunications.
Juana Mora Casal, Costa Rica, Doctor of Science, Chemical Engineering, Cum Laude. Douglas Melwina, Zambia, Bachelor's of Arts, Property Management. Marina Luisa Nelson, Angola, Bachelor of Business and Economics, Human Resources and Management. Luis Eduardo Franco Mauricio, Guatemala, Bachelor's of Education, English Education. Elia Sampoia Farnera, Doctor of Philosophy, Teaching Portuguese Foreign Language.
how to hear it. I want to encourage all of us not to just stay where we are, but let's share the news. If you have been good to us, let's share it. Thank you very much.
Jorge Antonio Araya Morales, United States Bachelor of Science Nutrition. Nito Manuel Davila Toro, Peru, Bachelor of Science, Civil Engineering. Reynaldo Alcides Caraballo, Caraballo, El Salvador, Bachelor of Science, Electrical Engineering. Alberto Domingos, Angola, Bachelor of Telecommunications, Telecommunications. Crystal Flying Tangi, Cameroon, Doctor of Science, Linguistics.
Winston Nusu Nusu Menge, Guina, Guena, Doctor of Science Education. Edwin Marcelo Cosa Munoz, Ecuador, Masters of Science, Sports Science. Rigoberto Basta, United States, Bachelor's of Science, Accounting. Douglas Rivero Merida, Guatemala, Bachelor's of Education, Education. Alex Mauricio Mata Hernandez, El Salvador, Bachelor's of Science, Electrical Engineering. Lisset Margarita Calderon Pa. Panama, Bachelor's of Science, Environmental Engineering. Marco Antonio Cabrera Rojas, Guatemala, Bachelor's of Science, Agronomy. Pedro Pablo Castillo Prieto, Colombia, Bachelor's of Science, Electrical Engineering. Walter Kessler, Guatemala, Doctor of Science, Business Administration. Alba Simone Abi, Argentina, Master of Science, Mathematics. Enrique Nien Parada, Bolivia, Bachelor of Business Administration, Business Administration. tenía que ser short and sweet, corto y dulce. Yo le agregué que tenía que ser real también, 
y como buen discurso tiene que poder resumirse en una sola palabra. Esa palabra es gracias. Gracias a la universidad. Gracias a mis compañeros, a mis profesores, a todos. Y le cedo lugar a mis compañeros para que puedan seguir expresándose. Muchas gracias.
Chibuli Khan Jackie Chiwele, Sambia, Doctor of Business International Investments. David John, USA, Doctor of Philosophy, Literature. Jaime Salvador Torres, El Salvador, Doctor of Science, Business Administration. Maria Esperanza Velasco, Mexico, Doctor of Science, Economics. Oluyami Ademihi, Nigeria, Doctor of Science, Computer Science. Doreen Gonda, Malawi, Doctor of Science, Management. Charity Ahba Boatem, Ghana, Doctor of Science, Communications. Doris Quiriz, Ecuador, Doctor of Science, Public and Social Policy. <laughs> Julita Chime Maratska, Zimbabwe, Doctor of Science, Public Health. <laughs> Maria Alejandro Gato, Argentina, Doctor of Science, Education. <laughs> William Rivadena, Austria, Doctor of Science, Education. Maria Cristina Vital, Argentina, Doctor of Science Education. Mario Rodriguez Lara, Guatemala, Doctor of Science, Geomatic Engineering. Nadal Buhari, United Arab Emirates, Doctor of Science Engineering Management. Ana Karina Aragon, Angola, Master of Business Project Management. Charity Moimba, CC Business Administration. Abel Guerrera Paola, Angola, Masters of Science, Water Resources, Environmental Science. Why is that? 
They say, well, we'll accommodate you. I'm still enrolled on doctorate. I'm still within. Uh, I'm representing a, a large group, a group that goes from Australia, Austria, uh, I've got friends from Zambia, uh, El Salvador, uh, everywhere. That's a case of say, Buenos Aires, Buenos, Buenos Dias, Buen Dia, Buen Tarde, Good Afternoon. So we speak all the language. Uh, sum it up. AIU is smart because it's got oh, a very good objective. The objective is specificity, measurability, achievability, result oriented, and time bound. That's why that's smart. And finally, key is them. Keep it simple and very, very nice because I don't want to say it to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. por haberme permitido estar en esta universidad de élite y hoy obtener mi título. Y a la vez quiero conocer al gran mentor de este título, que es José Mercado, y decirle que en Ecuador tiene una guerrera para luchar por AIU a que forme parte de la lista de universidades de élite en mi país. Gracias. First of all, sorry for butchering some of your names. I apologize profusely. The next step is the swearing of graduates by Dr. Franklin Boston. So, graduates, stand up, please.
Ophelia Hernández, Linda Collazo, Juan Pablo Moreno, Mikias Bircho, Verónica Mus, Alba Ochoa, all the group leaders, the entire IU staff, please then give them a round of applause. This brings the ceremony portion to a completion. Thank you very much for coming. Yep.